Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 4 of my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future episodes. In this episode, I'm actually talking to one of our uh, machine learning heroes, Pavlos, uh, working for the Expedia Group. This is an interview that I've done a few uh, weeks ago for the AWS Innovate online conference, but I thought it was so good that uh, I should use it for the podcast as well. So without further ado, let's listen to what Pavlos has to say on machine learning. See you in a while. So Pavlos uh, will introduce himself, but just to give you a, a little background, um, I actually started following him on Twitter a while ago because he was, uh, he was sharing all kinds of really, really cool stuff. And, and there was AWS content and, and SageMaker, and I'm like, okay, I gotta, you know, gotta talk to this guy. And then completely by chance, right, we, uh, we ended up speaking at the same meetup in Athens, right? It was the big data meetup. So hi to everybody from Greece, if you're watching, uh, looking forward to uh, being back there. Uh, and, uh, and we said, oh, yeah, I, we know each other, right? And, um, and then we talked a little more, and, uh, and it was a very easy decision for us to decide that uh, Pavlo should be a machine learning hero, right? Uh, if you're curious about machine learning heroes, you probably know about AWS heroes. So uh, members of the AWS community who do a lot, right? Uh, help uh, other developers with you know, tools and blogs and, 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 and whatnot and projects. And now we have machine learning heroes. So, Pablos, you're one of those. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very selective. I'm, up. I'm really excited to be an AWS ML hero. Um, so, well, yeah, I'm a st staff data scientist uh, working for Expedia Group and an ML hero. Um, I'm so excited about machine learning and really uh, privileged to live in this era. Um, I've started working in ML I mean, maybe seven years now, eight years ago. Uh, when it wasn't so fancy. Uh, did you actually study it or did you uh, fake it until you made it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I studied operations research uh, and then computer science. I took many uh, ML courses mm -hmm. or <clears throat> courses about optimization, uh, but it wasn't, there wasn't any course back in the days specialized in machine learning. So I had some formal training, uh, but that's all. Um, Scikit-learn wasn't a thing back then. Mm. I remember it was Weka. Um, it was a good tool for small data. Um, and yeah, it was like MapReduce, a big thing. Yeah. Um, I published a paper about MapReduce. So people were starting talking about big data, how to store all this data, how to process them. So it was the beginning of the first step of machine learning. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a good point. Uh, I have a slightly similar story, although I didn't take any formal courses. But yeah, a big data, you know, 2010, 2011, yeah. right? It was all about Hadoop and big data and piling up web logs and try to figure out what to do with them. Um, and, uh, and machine learning kind of followed on, right? I thought, oh, we have data, we have computing power. And we have uh, to do something with them. Let's do something. Yeah, we can't just do basic aggregation or whatever. Let's be yeah. smart. So we had all the data on S3, you know, terabytes of data. Yeah. And then the question was like, OK, what are we doing now? Uh, and then we had to use all these MapReduce and Hadoop mm. uh, processing tools to, pr pr to prepare the data for the machine learning models. And then it was like, it was a painful era where we didn't have a lot of good ML tools. Yeah. Uh, to process big data. Yes, and, and so I keep saying it, uh, you know, uh, machine learning is not something on the side, right? Machine learning is just one step in your project and you need uh, data and big data tools. And uh, we had a session today on uh, what big data services on AWS can help you with that. You know, Glue and uh, Athena and EMR, so data engineering seems to be the, the buzzword now, okay? Exactly. Uh, so data engineering uh, is, is really, really important. Uh, and ML just follows that, right? Exactly. It's, it's, it's a big process that involves many people from different disciplines. Data engineers, software engineers, data scientists, machine learning engineers even product managers. Mm. So it's, uh, it's really challenging to, to make all these people work together. 
Um, and then now we have all these tools and it's more like an organizational problem. How Interesting. <laughs> so you were, you're part of the Expedia group. Um, tell us about um, how you, what, what kind of uh, machine learning projects you work on and, uh, and how do you organize them? Because I, I absolutely agree, you know, tech, you know, tech is on the table. We can pick what we need and, and assemble things and build. But uh, actually running the project, getting uh, from the business question to the actual prediction that helps improve the business KPI, that's the big story, right? So tell us a little bit about what you do on a daily basis. Well, I think 90% of my, of my job is to prepare data, mine data for the 10%, which is actually machine learning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the number that I keep hearing, 80% at least. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, uh, I'm really happy because I think in most other jobs, the fun part is 1% or 2%. So <laughs> relatively speaking, it's good. At 10%, yeah, it's the, the, the absolute minimum, right? <laughs> uh, but I'm really privileged to be part of Expedia yeah. because um, it's a big company. They have an ML platform that essentially helps data scientists to unlock their talent. I think one key thing um, to make a successful machine learning project in a big company or a small company, it doesn't matter, is to have a really good machine learning platform. Um, that's the key thing. Um, and that's why, for example, Sage, I believe that SageMaker uh, can, can enhance and make machine learning power many different features on the companies out there. Yeah, I, I, I hear that from a lot of customers. You know, of, of course, when we do those small demos like we've done today, we look at toy problems, very small data sets, and we try to solve one thing. But I, 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 I guess you know, when you're working on ML at Expedia or any other company, you're maybe looking at you know, 50 problems and 200 data sets and thousands of models because um, if you're trying to build a classifier, right, there's no one way to do it. There are so many ways. And then what about hyperparameter tuning, which we talked about, you know, more models, more models, more models. So, um, and if you, uh, if you have a larger team, right, if you have you know, one data scientist, that person is already going to build lots of things. If you have 10 or 50, 100, then you're looking at, you know, potentially thousands of training jobs every day. And, exactly. and the cleaning processes, et cetera, right? So that's, that's the exactly. main issue right now. And you need to make sure that you're not duplicating any work yeah. because probably someone else in another office has built the same, the similar classifier. Yeah. Um, so discovering ML models in a company is another big problem. Mm -hmm. And here SageMaker can help you where you can search for the different training jobs, uh, what were the parameters, what, were, what was the input data, um, how often this model is trained, uh, if it is deployed, um, all this stuff. Yeah, so, so data wrangling, data engineering is important. Uh, model discovery, model versioning, exactly. uh, data set preparation is important. Uh, what, about, um, what about the actual uh, training and deployment process? I mean, how... That's a question I ask to everybody. How much automation do you have today? Do you still have a human in the loop for model validation, whatever, model QA? Or you know, what's the automated part? What's the manual part? And how far are you willing to go? I think and you can't lie, right? <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people are watching. <laughs> I think that... Um, I. There is, at the moment, the deployment process is not fully automated. So I have a CLI tool that deploys a model, for example, at Expedia. Uh, but I have to remind myself that, OK, this model needs to be retrained on new yes, data. Yes, retraining is important. Exactly. Um, so I think that, universally speaking, there is no continuous delivery from machine learning out there. Mm -hmm. That, essentially, you can have a file like a Jenkins file um, that will tell to, um, to your CD tool, OK, go and retrain the model every week using this data, and then deploy it uh, as a RESTful endpoint, 
have three instances. Uh, oh, and before we deploy it, make sure that, for example, the precision on recall mm. uh, is higher than specific threshold. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think we have something like that. Um, so SageMaker is. Do you, do you think it's Do you think it's possible? I mean, like, do you think we'll get to uh, um, you know one click? Um, one click automation, just like we've done for web apps and containers and everything else, you know, or, or do we always need um, a, a human at some point, you know, looking at the model and deciding, okay, this is a good one or this is a bad one, and okay, click and then go, go and push it, which is automated. What, what's your gut feeling here? I think it's possible, yeah. but it will take time. Uh, I think the whole machine learning community needs to agree to the best practices. Um, there are many different ways to do it. Um, I think that, for example, SageMaker enforces in a good way the best practices. Yeah. And you know, a company like Amazon, that you know, does machine learning for maybe decades. Sure. sure. Uh, you know, you know already all the painful points. Yeah. Essentially, you need you know what needs needs not to be done. And that's very important. Yeah. So we can, the community can learn from that and can transcend to the best practices out there. Uh, I think it's possible, like now we have SageMaker, which is essentially the ML infrastructure. But let's, ta let's take a step back. ML platform consists of two things, an ML infrastructure like SageMaker and an interface between the data scientists and the ML infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That interface needs to be uh, a u user interface and the CLI tool at the same time. Sure. Um, so Sageify, the CLI tool I've built. Uh, yeah, we're going to get a demo of that later in the, in the session, OK? It's a, it's, a very, it's a very cool tool. Um, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess, so DevOps, right? And that's why you know, we, we wanted to have uh, automation and, uh, and DevOps and, and data wrangling uh, sessions today. Because uh, I, I don't know if you, if you see that as well, but a lot of customer discussions around ML tend to drift to you know neural networks and SGD and, uh, and and the crazy stuff in five minutes and I'm always saying whoa, 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 whoa. okay next person who says SGD is just leaves the room you know exactly. what's the business problem right exactly so um, I guess my, my question is and without disclosing anything of course how fancy are real life models, right? Because we keep reading, you know, hacker news and, and archive papers and about the crazy, the, la the new crazy GAN or the, the new crazy uh, NLP models, you know, BERT and all the variations around BERT are really, really exciting. Now, if we come back to reality, right? Isn't, any, isn't just everyone using linear regression and XJBoost and, I think 90% <laughs> of the cases, yeah. You know? <laughs> it's really funny because linear regression is out there maybe 100 years yeah. old, something like that. And yeah, someone uses linear regression and says, OK, I'm doing AI. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then statisticians uh, you know, get a little bit angry and they were like, oh, I was doing AI 25 years ago. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a good thing. We need baselines. Uh, every time that you start a new ML project, you need a baseline. Just use linear regression, logistic regression. Uh, maybe use random classifier. Mm -hmm. random w so would you actually recommend, because we have a lot of uh, people who are new to machine learning also uh, watching us, um, is that something you, 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 you work on every day? Like, let's try the simple things first. Let's try the simple or basic algos. And I mean that in a you know, positive sense. Simple is good. We love simple. I love simple, because I understand them. So would you run those first before going crazy with uh, you know, neural networks and, and everything else? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Uh, you know, there is the Occam's razor theorem that you know, yeah. simplicity is the best thing. Uh, so definitely, because it will make your whole process simpler. You will deploy a model in production in much less time. Uh, and will make everyone in the business happy. Mm. So in this way, uh, you have something in production. You will get quickly feedback. If the model works really well in production, you have simple code. Um, it's understandable mm -hmm. by most engineers and product managers. And then if everyone is happy and they want to move on and make it more accurate, then yeah, you can move on to deep learning 
or more fancy uh, tools, algorithms, etc. So that's that's great advice to everybody out there, especially the people who are kind of new to ML. You know, and that, again, that's why we wanted to have this session on the introduction to ML with Scikit-Learn and and go through um, you know linear regression, logistic regression, uh, tr trees, and you know PCA, right? Um, a lot of people ask me, oh, I want to learn about deep learning. How do I do that? And my answer is always the same. It's like, how much do you know about statistical ML? Oh, yeah, right? definitely. Start, you know, you have to walk before you run. So, um, so spend some time learning those because like Pavel's just said, um, a lot of companies just use that. I mean, XJBoost is still winning on Kaggle all oh, yeah. the time, right? Yeah. So it's, it's winning competition. It's still very good. And a lot of people still... Uh, use it, it's probably the most popular algo today, right? Exactly. And if you're starting, it's really good to find a good mentor, mm -hmm. an informal one, someone that has been doing machine learning for many years, and try to learn from that person mm -hmm. what didn't work in the workplace, what it worked, um, what open source tools they used, uh, how do they collaborate with other members in the company. Mm -hmm. I think it's a key thing uh, before you you start uh, applying this stuff uh, in an industrial setting. Yeah, that's good advice. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be more brutal about it. So don't believe the hype, I guess. OK, uh, you know, just like everyone else, I read the blogs and I read the archive papers and, uh, and, and the technical blogs from cool companies, etc. But real life is usually more boring and it's great because, you know, Boring is, is nice. Boring technology is simple to understand and simple to, uh, to explain. So if you solve your problem with uh, uh, you know, random forests or linear regression, then Perfect. fine, right? You're, you are doing machine learning. Okay, that's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll be back next week with more AWS news and demos and God knows what else. Until then, keep rocking. Mm -hmm.